Hello friends, welcome to the second part of Raven's Progressive Mattresses. In this video, we are going to learn about the administration, scoring and interpretation of Raven's Standard Progressive Mattresses. So let's start. The Raven's Standard Progressive Mattresses is a paper pencil test, but a computer version is also available if need be. It can be administered both in a group setting or to an individual. As such, there is no time limit, but usually people take 40 to 60 minutes to do it. It can be administered to individuals who do not speak English or who are hearing impaired. In such an instance, it should be administered individually or to a small group of maximum five people. Consult the manual carefully before administering the test. Before starting the test, keep the following material handy. SPM booklet, response sheet, SPM manual, pen and pencil. Also, keep in mind the following precautions. The room where the test is conducted should be well lit and well ventilated. There should be no noise in that room. The seating arrangement should be comfortable. There is no time limit for this test. Instructions should be made clear to the subject. No item should be left unanswered. Proper rapport should be established with the client, with the subject before starting the practical. Next, first form the rapport with the client before starting the test. For rapport formation, you can generally ask the person how he is feeling, strike a friendly conversation, ask him about his family, his favorite subjects, how is he doing at school, what does he want to do in future. All these things will make him calmer. Once he is calm and gives you a nod that he is ready to take the test, then start with the instruction. Give the following instructions to your subject. Here is a test booklet and a separate answer sheet on which you will record your answers. Please ensure that you do not write anything on the test booklet. Please enter the required information that is your name, age, etc. in the answer sheet. Now open the first page of the test booklet to find problem A1. Now locate the column of numbers 1 to 12 under the heading set A on your answer sheet. Now look at problem A1. The upper portion of the page has a pattern with a piece cut out of it. Select the one piece from the six options given below. The pattern that you think is right as it fits into the pattern. What would be the answer? Wait for the subject to respond. Number 4, as you said, is the right piece. So the answer is number 4. You will now write 4 next to number 1 under the heading Set A on the answer sheet. Help your client, help your subject to see how the answer has to be filled in in the answer sheet. Similarly, on every page of this booklet, there is a pattern with a portion missing. You have to choose the right piece out of the options given below the pattern. Immediately after deciding on the right option, you must write the option number next to the item number on the answer sheet. The problems are simple in the beginning and get harder as you progress. Attempt all problems. If you are not sure about a particular answer, you may make a guess but don't leave any item unanswered. Make sure that you record the answers in the right column of the answer sheet. There is no time limit, but try to finish as soon as possible. Note down the time when your subject starts doing the test. Also note the time when your subject ends the test. Here you can see the answer sheet. The subject will fill in the answers against the item numbers. Let's learn about the scoring now. Once your subject has finished the test and handed over the answer sheet to you, check the answer sheet with the help of the key given in the manual. For every correct answer, give a score of 1. For every wrong answer, a score of 0. After that, total up the columns. 
So you would have a total up of the score in column A, set A, then score of set B, score of set C, score of set D and score of set E. You will get five scores like this. Now total up these scores also to get a single score by adding all these together that will be your raw score. Let us look at an example now. Here, the subject has scored 12 in set A, 12 in set B, 9 in set C, 12 in set D and 10 in set E. Overall, if you total this up, his total raw score is 55. We will find out the discrepancy now. Now we will open up the expected score table in the manual. And we will track down and find out where the total score of 55 is. Now the expected breakup of 55 is 12, 12, 11, 11, 9. We shall write this on the answer sheet. Now we will write the expected scores next to the scores that our subject got in various sets. In set A, the subject got 12, expected score 12. There is no discrepancy in these, zero discrepancy. B, 12, 12, no discrepancy, 0. Then in C, the expected score was 11 and the subject got 9. So a discrepancy of minus 2. In D, expected score 11, subject got 12. Discrepancy of plus 1. In E, expected score was 9, subject got 10. So a discrepancy of plus 1. What is the discrepancy score? It's the difference between the score a person obtains on each set and that which is normally expected for his total score. This is called the discrepancy score as shown numerically could be 0, could be minus 1, could be 2, minus 2 like that. If a person's score on any of the sets deviates by more than 2, if it is more than plus 2 or minus 2, then his total score on the scale cannot be expected on its face value as a consistent estimate of his general capacity of intellectual ability and uh, needs to be taken with a pinch of salt. Now we will convert the raw scores into percentile scores. Now in the norms table, first and foremost find out the column which corresponds to your subject's age. My subject's age is 15 years so I am taking this column the norms for daily India. Now my subject's uh, score is 53 which is beyond 50, 50 is here and I will see it corresponds with which percentile it says 95th percentile. So the raw score gets converted to 95th percentile here. Now let's learn the interpretation. Those who score at or above 95th percentile fall in grade 1 intellectually superior range. Those whose score lies at 75th percentile or above it, they would fall in grade 2 above average range. If someone's score lies between 90th to 94th percentile, then it would be designated as grade 2 plus. If someone scores between 25th to 75th percentile, He'll be termed as intellectually average and in grade 3. If the score lies above 50th percentile, grade 3 plus. If the score lies below the 50th percentile, grade 3 minus. If the score lies at or above 25th percentile, it will be designated as grade 4 below average intelligence. If it lies at or below the 10th percentile, then grade 4 minus. If a score lies at or below the 5th percentile, then the person falls in grade 5 intellectually impaired. Thank you for watching this. I shall be coming up with other practicals very soon. Thank you so much.